All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome. So we're so glad that you all made it out today on a Saturday to spend some time with us uh, and uh, to be able to hear some of our charter school applicants. My name is Sheila Burke, and I'm honored to serve as the Chief Academic Officer for our school district. So I'm joined today by some of our leadership from CLA. Uh, they're going to be going over their presentation here in, a, in, in just a few minutes. Uh, but we're going to get started around today's session. Uh, there's going to be two presentations. Uh, you guys will remain seated in our room here. And then our applicants are the ones that are going to be switching rooms here. So in here today, we're going to hear from Community Leadership Academy, or CLA, and then the same is true for Victory Preparatory Academy, or what we call VPA. Then the second presentation is going to come from University Prep, or what we refer to as UPrep, and they'll come in here in, uh, at, the, at the second session. Okay. These are the two applicants that have applied to uh, become charter schools under Adams 14's district boundary areas uh, for the upcoming school year, which would be for the 22-23 school year. Okay. So today's agenda, uh, we're going to um, first do our welcome, which is what we're doing now. Uh, we are going to go through our first presentation, again, which will be from CLA VPA. We're going to have... Um, is it, 15 minutes. 15 minutes for their presentation, followed by a 20-minute Q&A. On your chairs are some note cards and some pens for you to be able to write down questions that you may f see fit to be able to ask our applicants during uh, the close of their presentation. If you need additional note cards, uh, then we will be able to help bring those around to you, or you can grab one from another chair that may be empty. Our timer will be up here for applicants so that you guys can watch your time on there and we're going to stop right exactly at the 15 minute mark as well as the 20 minute mark. Uh, from there then our presentation, uh, presenters are going to go into the other room and then our UPREP team is also going to come in here and we'll follow the same process. Uh, there are restrooms right outside the door so if you need to step out feel free to do so and then we also have translation services uh, for any of you that may need that as well. Any questions from our audience before we begin? All right, well, welcome again. So at this time, I'm going to, uh, I will, Brianna, come back to these slides in just a second. Actually, before we go, I'm going to go over these real quick, and then I'll come back to them at the end. Uh, so today is our applicant's um, opportunity to be able to engage with our community. Uh, that's the first date that you see up there. We'll also have a second opportunity on Monday, November 15th at 6 p.m., and then a third opportunity on Wednesday, November 17th. So if you have additional questions that you want to be able to come in and hear, the presentations will be the same, but it'll be your opportunity to be able to engage with both applicants. Followed by a community survey that is also active on our district website that closes Friday, December 10th at midnight. Uh, so you and any of our community members are able to take that survey. I believe there's 15 questions, 14, excuse me, 14 questions. And then any information around our applicants and the process that our district is following uh, can be located uh, using that URL at the bottom of the screen there. Okay. All right, so at this time, I'm going to turn it over to our first applicant. You all have your microphone up at the top, so we'll ask you just to talk clearly into that and then to give enough time for our translator to be able to do simultaneous interpretation. And then I'm also going to give you the clicker for your convenience. Hello. Great. Everybody can hear. Um, welcome to the Community Forum meeting for the Community Leadership Academy Charter School application to Adams County School District 14. I'm Tina Jadelski, one of the original founders and the co-CEO of the school. And then I have Ron Jadelski, the CEO to my left, and then Nancy Brooks, one of our board members, Claudia Dupuch, one of our administrators, and a parent, her husband, a parent Justin DePooch as well. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just flip through the slideshow. Um, it's a pretty casual presentation today. So again, um, there's three schools that make up Community Leadership Academy.
Okay, so here's the campuses. We're currently open. Um, unlike most charter applicants that come, it's for a school to open. We've been open since 2005, originally um, authorized by District 14 and then 2011, authorized by the Charter School Institute. So we have a campus at 6880 Holly, which houses the elementary pre-K-5 and the Victory Prep Academy, which houses our middle. Um, 6 8 and then our high school which is 9 12 on 5701 Quebec This is inside the VPA campus. We have a lecture hall on our third floor and then on the bottom there you see the science lab and then the weight room This is CLA's interior of the school the cafeteria on the top the gymnasium on the bottom left and then our um, kindergarten preschool and first grade playground in the back of the school the vision and the mission. So back in 2004, a group of local citizens um, created a steering committee and created the, two, the CLA as a, as a K-8 actually. And then in 2013, we added the high school. But the, I wanna go ahead and read um, the mission statement that was developed by community members back then. So Community Leadership Academy's mission is to provide a college preparatory education to Commerce City's economically and ethnically diverse students through a rigorous and creative educational atmosphere which promotes a lifelong love of learning, academic excellence, character development, civic leadership, community involvement, and an appreciation of arts and cultural diversity. The education program is provided in a safe, clean, healthy, and vibrant educational environment where all students are expected to achieve their full potential. The following slides I'm not going to read. We're just gonna kind of flip through them pretty quickly since we're limited on time. But they are included in the application which is sitting up here and there's a Spanish version and an English version on the District 14 website. So for goals, objectives, and student performance, um, during COVID, we're looking at MAPS data, and we're looking at Acadians, which is Dibbles for K3. We still continue to look at dropout rate, attendance rates, and safety information. And then going forward this year, we'll be looking at the CMAS, PSAT, SAT, attendance, all of those things that the state requires for the school performance framework. And then when we get to evidence of support for existing schools, evidence of support <laughs> is um, represented by current enrollment. So our current enrollment in pre-K-5 is 322, and in middle school, 176, and high school, 112. The demographics, when you look at this, and there's also these for you guys, that if you wanna grab one from the table. Um, demographics really represent District 14 as far as language proficiency, um, minority students, um, lunch eligibility. We're really on, on track with what District 14 um, student population represents as well. Accreditation, um, we look um, this is going to show you on the, the top portion of this is the Charter School Institute's designation for our schools for accreditation, which have been performance or distinction um, during the last term of our contract, the last five years. And then below that is the Colorado Department of Education performance, which has been performance, which is their highest rating. So the Charter School Institute adds another layer, which is distinction for the schools that are in the top 25% of the state. Education program and serving students with special needs. So again, we have um, all of the opportunities at the school for all students. At our elementary school, we're considered core knowledge. So we have that curriculum, which includes Reading Street. And in the middle and the high school, um, we have elements of literature, chemistry, biology, physics, economics, all the core subjects there too. And then we have gifted and talented, special education services, ELL services, and those are listed here too. When we evaluate pupil performance, that is kind of what the previous slide had too about accreditation. And so I'm just gonna run through. We do WIDA access, CMAS, PSAT, SAT. Locally, we do MAPS, NWEA MAPS data um, three times a year, STAR three times a year. 
Acadians three times a year. And then we have embedded curricular assessments within all of our curriculum. We do school-wide writing prompts. And then we just have core academic assessments that are built throughout. And then we also, um, for preschool, do teaching strategies gold. Budget and finance, um, the full budget and five-year projection is included in the application. But the school is pleased to mention that we've continued to maintain a positive fund balance, meet all of our bond covenants, and maintain all required reserves over the course of the school being open. It's a list of our board of directors. Our organizational chart. Employees and insurance, so all of our teachers are highly qualified. And then we maintain all of the required insurance um, as mandated by the state. Waivers, discipline, expulsion, and suspension. Um, it's important that we have a safe environment, of course, uh, conducive to learning. And we follow um, all of the state requirements for due process. And the school personnel um, follows the policies and procedures that are set forth in this parent-student handbook. Community involvement. We believe that involvement looks like a variety of things, being involved in school events, participating with homework, um, volunteering, being employed at the school, serving on our board, the accountability committee donated to the school, um, all, of, all of those different things. We also have a SAC committee, which serves like a district accountability committee. And um, those meetings are held at least quarterly. Enrollment in transportation. Um, we provide all transportation to our students that live within District 14 boundaries. We have five buses in service, um, six buses <laughs> that serve both schools. And then we do a complete um, food service program as well with scratch cooking in both of our buildings. All students receive free and reduced meals, um, breakfast and lunch. And then we also participate in the fruit and vegetable snack program. Briefly, our facilities um, are uh, single point entry facilities, which are for safety. So the only entrance, you have to go through the main entrance and you have to get permission to access the interior of each building. Um, our buildings are about 125,000 square feet between the two. The campus, CLA campus is about three acres and the VPA campus is a little over seven acres. Do you want to flip it, Dean? So I want to take a minute on this slide because I feel like what we haven't talked about is, is that we started the schools. We, we were just everyday Commerce City people. We were born and raised here, grew up here, went to all the schools here. Our kids went to the schools here. And there was a point where we felt like we wanted to do something to make the schools better. So we spent six years talking to people in the community about ways to make the community better. And make, uh, starting a school was something that there was, there was a lot of support for. But I want everybody to understand is that we used the charter law, the charter mechanism, to start community schools, Commerce City schools for Commerce City people. That's what it was all about. The charter school movement just allowed us a mechanism to do that. And we did that almost 20 years ago. And those schools now, this slide shows that these are all the academic awards that our students and families and schools have won. In the last 10 years, we've received some kind of recognition and academic achievement award every single year for the last decade. Right now, the elementary school, I believe, is in the top 15% of all elementary schools in Colorado. The middle school and the high school are in the top 25% of all middle and high schools in Colorado. And we've worked really hard, and I feel like this is really more than just a charter school application. So we've been out of Adam 14 for, a, a, for 10 years. But right now, what we, somebody explained to us is that there's an opportunity for us, if we're reintegrated back into Adams 14, that it would sh shorten the time that Adams 14 is on the 
the priority improvement or turnaround that the State Board of Education has them on. That this might shorten that trajectory for them to get back to normal. And the whole reason for our schools being started was that for com Commerce City people to help Commerce City people. So when we started having people come to us saying that that might be a possibility, that's really what this conversation is about. Can our schools, Commerce City families and Commerce City students, can we help now the bigger district as a whole, the rest of Commerce City parents and Commerce City students by being reintegrating back into Adam 14 and being three very successful schools. The other thing is all of our performance data, Adams 14 doesn't get to take advantage of. And the, the English immersion, which our schools do, is a choice that our parents have now wanted for almost 20 years, 17 years. But, but should there be a distinction and that's not possible in the future, it means that parents may need to leave the district to find that option. I don't think that they need to do that now. But at some point, so what I'm saying is, is that it gives the district another option for parents and it gives the district another group of successful schools and parents that are supportive of strengthening and improving the district as a whole because this is our place. We're from here. We grew up here. On the, the next, this, this is a list of the awards from the time we started winning them all the way back in 2011. And I feel like we want everybody to know that this isn't really like a charter school application to us. This is, this, we also thought about the fact that we've been at this for 20 years and should we not be here, shouldn't these schools that were started by Commerce City people for Commerce City people be a part of Adams 14, the Commerce City School District? Right now, they're part of the state. So I think that's all. Well, we appreciate the overview from your presentation there. Uh, at this time, we're going to open it up for our audience members to be able to ask questions to our applicant. If you want to take a minute to write down your thoughts, if you need additional note cards, we can bring those around. I am going to bring around a microphone with, and we've brought in some disinfectant wipes so that I can wipe them through each use of that. Thank you, we're done. All right, so the next section is going to allow us for, five, um, excuse me, 20 minutes for our question and answer portion. During that time, so during that time, I apologize, I'm going to be reading the questions from your cue cards that you have for applicants to be able to respond to. Will you bring them to my so I'm going to bring you all some wipes too, so that in case you want to wipe off in between each of yours as well. Okay. All right, so Brianna, if you will get 20 minutes on our timer. And we have our first question. Thank you. So there are three questions listed on here. I'm going to read each one separately so that you have a chance to respond to all three. Why are you making the shift from authorization under CSI to Adams 14? Is that we can you guys hear me do I need the microphone you need it for the recording yeah. um, because it's an opportunity for us after all these years to be a part of Adam 14 which is exactly was the original mission of the school was to help the community as a whole and make make the community better so Okay, the next question on that same card is, CLEA and VPA carries a reputation of being a no excuses, zero tolerance school model. How do you intend to support our children in a culturally responsive, developmentally non-punitive way? Yeah, and I, don't, I, I, I know that that might be, but I feel like that, that would not be the narrative of our parents. That, that might be a narrative that somebody took away who's angry at the school, or, or, but that's not. The truth of it is, is that we've been around for 17 years, and you don't have the success that we've had if you mistreat people. 
and that you're not, again, because we're from here, I feel like we're extremely culturally sensitive. Thank you. Next question, CLA and VPA have a reputation of pushing uh, families out who challenge practices. How will you work to listen to families? Yeah, again, I feel like that, 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 that's a narrative that's out there, but we have substantial documentation that that's not accurate. And the truth of it is, is that because we're from here, we're, we've done just the opposite. My brother was murdered in this community and my parents went to their graves believing that because he was expelled from school and pushed out, made an example of, that that's why he was in that situation. So the truth of it is, we actually created policies to help Commerce City families actually struggle and stumble and still have a way to come back to a, a possibility of a quality education. That's the truth. Thank you. Other questions? You'll just hold them up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, again, three questions on this card. What does the mer uh, what does the merge will it look like? The merge between us and Adams 14. Really, the authorization is uh, Adams 14 is like an oversight entity. So if you could look at it like Adams 14, the money comes to Adams 14 and then they, the money then passes through to us. But there are certain obligations that we have to the state, to the Department of Education, and we work out an agreement with Adams 14 that we're gonna do that well. So it's really, it's, a, it's like an oversight relationship. They help us be good and be strong. We help them get better as a district as a whole. And there's a, there's a legal contract that, that connects that that has all these different uh, components of it. What's that? How would you help the district force become better as a whole? Well, the truth of it is, is that our, our three schools and their performance, we were approached by people saying that overnight, if we were integrated back into Adams 14, our data and the fact that our schools have been performance for a decade would bring Adams 14 out of the performance rating that they have right now. We haven't verified that completely, but we've talked to several different people who are under that impression that that would happen. At this time, here's the second question on there. And I'm gonna give a reminder, any follow-up questions, please add to your note cards. Okay, I'm gonna read it out loud, but with the request of our, our guests to take it off. So the question is, what does your school gain or money? She's asked for that one not to come up, to be read because you guys responded to that. The third one on there is, why does your school only focus on academics, no sports, art? So we do have sports after during during covid um the sports access has changed for sure and we do offer um pe music and art at our elementary school and then also in the high school and the middle school there are electives and pe there too thank you next question why no sports or art awards I, I think I we, we do have sports and we and we do have art. Yeah. So our panelists, I'm going to ask you to use the microphone in there. So Mr. Dzelski, if you would be so kind to repeat your response into the microphone. Thank you, sir. We have athletics and awards just like any other school. So our kids have letter jackets, they get awarded by their participation, they get letters, they do all of that. I feel like the list of awards that are on there, are those are awards that we've gotten from outside entities kind of observing our academic achievement. So if, if that's the confusion, that they're not listed on there because th that's a different type of award. Those, that's the school being awarded for their academic achievement. Uh <clears throat> Excuse me. As a parent um, and a board member, I believe the the focus is academics, yes, and sports is second. But we also do um, have like an extreme graduation rate, 
every single student last year that graduated was every single senior in class. Um, might have been a small class, but every single student graduated as well. And there are sports. Um, there are also ac clubs after school that are offered, like sign language, or there could be a music club, um, art club, a uh, whole bunch of different um, spectrum of clubs available. Thank you. Additional questions from our audience? You'll just hold your card up. Thank you. Okay, question is, what is your teacher retention rate? And then I'll follow up with the second question there. It fluctuates for sure. Um, during COVID, it has decreased. Um, I feel like the overall, the elementary school is 70%. The middle and the high school, um, closer to 60. And the follow-up question is, what is the ethnic diversity of your teaching body? Yeah, I don't think that we could do that, but the percentage off the top of our head. We hire the best teachers that we can get. We, uh, over 50% of our staff are representative of this community, Thank of the whole organization, not just so. Thank you. Questions from the audience, if you'll just hold your cards up. Question is, will there be a dress code? So again, the school was created um, in 2005 by local parents who did adopt a dress code. The dress code, um, if, do you want me to go into what it looks like? I know, but does she? Oh, she stepped out? Okay. <laughs> I can wait. Um, yes, I'll, I'll leave it at yes, there's a, there is a dress code. And um, when she gets back, if you'd like me to explain it, I can do that. Are there questions that are ready? Three questions on this card, so I'll begin with the first one. What is your plan to help students catch up academically from COVID? That's a, that's a very complicated question. Um, a lot of things, right? The, okay, <laughs> so first and foremost, um, re-engagement and um, mental um, support during coming back to school has been our priority for sure. And then again, um, analyzing the data of seeing if there's been any loss and then targeting instruction um, and support systems around you know, finding that gap. So it's very early. We were out of school, um, just like District 14, right up until spring of last year. It was all remote. Um, and so our students came back about the same rate, about 50% of our students came back at the, the spring semester. Um, so it is the first time that we have pretty much 100% students in classrooms. And so, like I said, um, there's a lot of supports going on. They look very different in different grade levels and they're holistic and they are, um, they're fluid. So they change as students' needs represent what that would look like. I also wanna say that this is what we're really good at. The grade leveling and everything that we learned 20 years ago and how to make sure that those kids, years growth in a year's time. So, and I feel like also our virtual learning platform so when everybody was trying to figure out what to do, we had 10 years of lesson plans that we had refined meticulously that were uploaded into that virtual um, platform. And so our kids were really being delivered the same school, the same lesson by the same teacher, even from the classroom, even though they were at home. So I feel like we have a shot to do this well because we've worked really hard at doing it well. My apologies, there was only two questions on the card. The second one is, how much extra money are you allocating to these efforts? 
Yeah, as, as much money as we can get. So um, I don't have a figure for you. The state continues to provide additional grants and funding um, and supports. So when we um, have additional funds, we have hired paraprofessionals, we've hired additional um, classroom teachers, interventionists. Um, we've increased our technology to ensure that while students are out on quarantine, they are accessing that online um, connection with the class. We have some parents who have chosen to stay remote, which is fine, and they're connecting every single day to that classroom from home now. So when um, there's additional funds available, we're using it and pointing it in that direction. Thank you. Next two questions. Do you have plans to expand either CLA or VPA? No, not at this time to expand, no. Okay. The next question, what is your vision for the next 10 years for your schools? So that's a really good question and that's the other reason that we've thought about at the Adams 14 is that our families have now worked hard and earned the opportunity to have the same academic levels of success that they've had now that it's taken us 20 years in the last decade to achieve. So what we really want is an authorizer that's going to embrace our schools and these families because they're local families and um, they're students and that they're going to help us continue to do what we do over the next several decades because now, one of the goals from 20 years ago was to prove that this could be done. And now it's been proven. So now I feel like we should prove that it can be sustained. Thank you. Additional questions from our audience? If you'll just hold them up your cards. Would you like me to go back to the dress code? Sure. So um, for high school, there, in both schools, we have two separate uniforms. Like I was, I was saying earlier, the original founders created the dress code. Um, and the dress code is a dress up uniform on Wednesdays. And so that is um, a professional style black pant at the middle, at the, at the high school. Do you mean to describe the high school or middle? Does it matter? Would it, it may be beneficial for our audience just <laughs> to be able to explain all? All of them? Okay. Yeah, we, okay, so um, at the elementary school, do you want to do a Claudia? No. <laughs> okay. At the elementary school on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, um, there's khaki pants and a blue polo. And then on Wednesday, dark blue pants, skirt, skirt, and it can be plaid too. And then a button up white shirt with a tie. I don't know if I should wait. Go ahead. Um, the middle school um, is khaki pants and then um, a black polo on Tuesday. We don't have school on Mondays, so Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then on Wednesday, um, khaki pants, white button-up sh shirt, and um, a tie. High school, black pants, um, maroon shirt. Um, that's Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday, black pants, white shirt, um, tie. The girls can wear skirts, squirts, dresses. They, instead of a tie, they can wear a scarf. So um, it's on our website if you want more details. Thank you. And a follow-up to that still around dress code. Will the merge affect the district's uh, 14 schools? No, the, it will not. Thank you. Other than helping the Adams 14 School District with your data, direct benefits does your school receive from this move? Oh, I'm sorry. Other than helping the Adams 14 School District with your data, what uh, direct benefits does your school receive from this move? Well, I think at the heart of the matter, um, like Ron explained, um, we're from Commer City. A lot of our board members and parents obviously live here. So there, there's a bigger heart of the matter about coming back than just data, for sure. Um, it's, it's a community. Our students go to, they have family members that go to both schools. Um, it's a benefit as well around safety and security. Um, being in District 14's network of information is helpful during inclement weather or any other community times of crisis when the fact that we are, have a different authorizer has 
fractured basically that communication, which again um, is important. So that's an additional benefit to be on the same page with safety um, in the community and things that are happening. We usually find out pretty late. Thank you. There's a, a little over three minutes left. Any additional questions from our audience? The other part is, is that we've been at this for over 20 years and at some point we're going to retire or leave. So we were also thinking that these schools should not be in the hands of an outside entity because I, they just don't care about local people the same. So at some point when we get ready to do that, we were also thinking that the right thing to do would to make sure that these schools were a part of the local community because that's how it started and that's what it was all about in the first place. Thank you. A little over two minutes. Any other um, final questions for our panelists? Question. Can you talk about bilingual ed or support for multilingual learners? Um, again, so when the school was founded and the, um, the, the steering committee created the school, they wanted English immersion, which was the option. Um, at the time, bilingual education was pretty much at every school here in District 14, and so that did look like at the time the alternative or choice. Now we feel like there is a comprehensive selection of choices. Right now you have STEAM um, over at ALSEP, and then you have DuPont, which is doing dual language, and then you have CLA VPA, you know, that's doing immersion, English immersion. So we do um, a lot of supports, you can see that our students come in um, on that slide, the same rate of monolingual Spanish speakers or English language learners as District 14. But then over time, they end up, um, you know, losing that kind of label in the state anyway, and then um, move on to um, not having, not being part of that category like on the school performance framework. So, um, the supports are sheltered English instruction and a lot of different strategies and ESL. All of our curriculum is purchased with those strands embedded in it for additional teacher support. And then also our teachers go through professional development to know how to do that English immersion. Thank you. There's so about 20 seconds left in there. As our clock winds down, I want to thank our panelists for being here today. Uh, again, we will have our panelists back on Monday, November 15th at 6 o'clock. It'll be here at our ESS building. Thank you, Brianna. Uh, and again, we will have our panelists here on Wednesday, November 17th at 10 o'clock in the morning. So feel free to tell neighbors, other community members uh, about it. All of our information will be listed on our district uh, Adams 14 website. Uh, but at this time, we will take a quick break for our panelists to be able to shift rooms. Uh, thank you again. Our next group that will be coming in is University Prep, uh, and they will be here in about five minutes. Thank you guys for joining us today. We appreciate all the information. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, as you uh, had our first presentation, we're going to get started here with our second presentation. Uh, uh, and I'm going to introduce myself again, so I, I apologize for the redundancies. Uh, but my name is Sheila Burke, and I'm honored to serve as the Chief Academic Affairs Officer for our school district. Uh, we are joined today by our university prep, who is another applicant for our school district around the charter. 
uh, just a few minutes, I will turn our presentation over to them to be able to go over an overview of their school. Uh, and then uh, that'll be a 15 minute presentation, followed by a 20 minute Q&A, uh, just like we did last time. So again, you just heard from our CLA VPA candidates. Again, today you're going to hear from uh, University Prep, or what we refer to as UPrep. Their complete application is on our district website for both applicants, should you choose to go off and look at it in its entirety. So today's agenda, uh, minus the time frames, are going to be off by an hour. So we're going to do our welcome. We're going to hear our second presentation, uh, which is at 10.50 mark, uh, followed by, uh, again, that'll be a 15-minute presentation, followed by a 20-minute Q&A. During our Q&A time, you have note cards on each of your chairs with a pen. So if you'll write down your questions through the presentation, or if you have some questions after that you'd like to ask, if you'll just hold them up. Our uh, session today is being recorded as it's part of our public process, which is why I'll be the person speaking into the microphone. If you have a follow-up question, you'll have to write that on a note card, and then we'll read it aloud for the record for today's session. Any questions from our audience members before we begin? All right, so our timer is going to be listed here for you, so it'll be up and ready so that you can see the countdown. Uh, once 15 minutes has concluded, uh, we'll have you finish your sentence, and then we will stop it and move it right into our Q&A portion. Okay. You, All right, sure. we'll get started here as soon as we get our presentation up and going. And then our panelists, we are going to ask that you use the microphone for you. Uh, that way our translator can Hello. hear and it goes right into our, mess, our uh, recording. All right, welcome. 15 minutes on the clock, go. Good morning. My name is David Singer. I'm the founder and executive director of University Prep. Uh, I've been leading our organization for 12 glorious years. And I'm also the parent of a 12-week-old who didn't want to sleep last night. So you can imagine how I'm feeling this morning. You feel me, six kids, that ain't no joke. I'm, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Let's start with the voice of our parents, because our families and our parents are the thing that matters most. And so here's Hilda, who spent six months with us designing this proposed school that we're gonna share with you. Like every parent, I wanna see my children be someone. I'd like to see them with an education that makes them sure of themselves. I want to see them continue as far as they want to go in their education and know that their school gives them the foundation they need to go after their goals. That's Hilda's voice. Community member, parent, she knows what's up. And we're here on behalf of her, not ourselves. So here's what we're gonna do in 14 minutes. Who are we and why are we here? What does it mean to be a partner to Adams 14, which is our ultimate goal? What are the goals for the proposed school, which our founding principal will share with you, as well as how we plan to achieve them? What have parents like Josette and Susanna experienced within our school and community leaders like Carla, who's up here? What does it actually look and feel like to be part of UPrep? We're going to show you a short video, and then we're going to invite you to upcoming cafecitos at the Starbucks down the street, where you can get some free coffee and a holiday gift basket, and tell us all the things you want and need in a potential future school, because your voice matters too. So here's who we are. We're founded in 2010 in Northeast Denver, about 10 minutes from here. We're a nonprofit organization. We currently serve about 620 children in K through fifth grade at two elementary schools in DPS. This is the demographics of our students. The vast majority of our children come from a low income household. 94% of our children are students of color. 10% of our kids have special needs or IEPs. And 25% of our students are English language learners or emerging bilingual students, which is a huge asset, right? Two languages is better than one. And this is our mission. Building a foundation of skills, knowledge, and character, we educate every child for a four-year college degree and a life of opportunity. That is why we exist every day. But what does that actually mean? It means this. Every kid, when they get to their junior or senior year in high school, deserves a dinner table conversation. What do you want for you? Four-year degree, two-year degree, technical program, study abroad, military, apprenticeship. What matches your ambitions? If you're undereducated in this country, you don't get the dinner table conversation. And we're pretty sick of that because we think that's for every kid. Every kid who reaches that point, that threshold of young adulthood, 
deserves that discussion and to have every option on the table. And so our schools are about setting the foundation to make that possible. Because if we miss the mark in kindergarten, in first grade, in second grade, if we miss the mark, we start to take these conversations away. And we don't tolerate that. How do we get to this point? We spent six months with amazing parent leaders from across Commerce City, who are Adams 14 residents, co-designing a school together, covering every topic you can imagine from serving students in special education, to what family engagement should look like in a school, to what the goals of the school should be. Parents have written a charter application that says, this is what we want in our backyard. We appreciate this school district, we love Adams 14, and we want an additional high quality school option that maybe looks and feels different and produces a different outcome. And so we spent six months designing this school with those families. And we want this school to be a partnership with Adams 14. That's really important to us, short and long term. And this is what we mean by that. We want to serve the same students the district serves, not different kids, the kids who live here. We want to bring families back. 2,987 children currently leave Adams 14 every day to go to school somewhere else. Brighton, Mapleton, Denver, Aurora. No, go to school in your backyard. You live in a great community. Be proud of it. Go to school here. We think introducing another high quality school option helps solve this problem. It doesn't hurt it, it helps it. We want to provide more high quality early childhood education seats. We think every three and four year old should have a full day, free, amazing pre-K experience. That's not currently the case for all kids in this community. We want to use the same district services. So if you're a parent who's got a kid in middle school and elementary school, same transportation, same food services, same occupational therapist or physical therapist for a kid. And so there's continuity for a family within the district. That's what it means to be a partner. We also want to align our goals. The district wants kids to graduate with a seal of biliteracy. Only 25 did last year. Only 25 kids did last year, but 63% of households speak Spanish. That's a missed opportunity. The district knows that. We want to help solve that problem by offering Spanish language programming and really robust English programming. So when kids get to high school, they're ready to get that seal of biliteracy. Because if you're behind at that point, you're not getting it. We want to support English language learners, support students with IEPs. Those are critically important subgroups of kids who've been overlooked for too long in the public education system. And we want to focus on family and community involvement. Parents being the heartbeat of the school and the school being a hub or a centerpiece of the community. And with that, let me turn it over to the amazing Mamie J. Howard, our founding principal, to talk about goals and how we're going to achieve them. Good morning. My name is Mamie J. Howard, and I am the founding principal of our proposed school, University Prep. I am also a mother of two children. I have a nine-year-old daughter who goes to University Prep at Steel Street because I believed so deeply in the mission that I was willing to try it out for my own child, and she is thriving. She loves reading now more than ever. She's learning so much, and every day I get to actually hear about her day, and it's not just she went to school for eight hours, and I'm not quite sure what she did. She is thriving. I also have a two-year-old son that is going to be three in January, and I believe so deeply in what we are proposing to you all that if we are able to open doors to University Prep in Commerce City, I will be sending my own son to our school because I believe so deeply in what we can accomplish together as families and as community members. Let's talk about some goals. So although at my heart I am an educator and I really geek out about all of this stuff, I also worked with our families and we geeked out together. We looked at what Colorado expects us to be able to do on CMAS, which is the state test, and what they expect 10-year-olds to walk away from elementary school being able to do. We looked at a math assessment, we looked at an ELA assessment, English language arts, and we said, whoa, children have to be able to do a lot before they're even in middle school. And with that, we know that in order to be able to accomplish that so that they have a strong foundation to actualize their wildest dream, we have to put in a lot of work. And then we looked at the data that you see before you, and we noticed that across Colorado State, we are not getting there. We are not laying the foundation that our children deserve so that they can go on to be excellent adults. And after all of that work with our co-design team, we set a goal. This is not Mamie Howard's goal. This is the goal that our family said, okay, well, if that's what the state is doing and it's not enough, we need to do better than the entire state. And together we can get there through what I'm about to share next. But let's root ourselves in a quote. 
Esmeralda, another co-design team parent, said if we work together as parents, students, and educators, if we set the bar higher, higher than what our state is doing, if we make them believe it's true, they can do it. It is possible. And I know, because I am watching my daughter, who I already thought was great, actualize greatness in a way that I never even thought was possible. Academics sit at the heart of what we do. If we don't set a solid foundation for our kids, there's no way that they go out into the world and can go after a four-year college degree. There's no way that they can go after a life of opportunity. So academics are very important to us, but it's not the only thing. We also make sure that our kids have a strong character, which is not just about are you a good person, but it is about can you reflect on your actions and can you make a commitment to do better when you are not being your best self when you show up every day? And we do that through our core values. We have prep values, pride, responsibility, enthusiasm, and perseverance. And our children every day have the opportunity to pause and reflect. Did we do our best? Did we show up as our best selves? And it's okay if you didn't because you're six. It's okay if you didn't because you're 10. But now what do we do next? We reflect, we make a commitment, and we do better. And in addition, we also pride ourselves on exposure. Our kids cannot see what's possible if they've never been exposed to it. We are limited by what we experience in our lives. I didn't know I could be an educator because I never saw myself in educators, yet here I am. We make sure that we give our kids the opportunity to go on college field trips so that they can stand on a huge college campus and say, wow, this can be me. We also make sure that through a wide variety of partnerships, our kids get to see the different opportunities that lie ahead of them that they might not know just simply because like, how do you, how do you work with Zillow? How do I get into that field? You only know if you can talk to somebody that has tapped into that field. And we know that we don't know everything yet, but we do have some, some phenomenal partnerships that can give us that exposure for our kids. They can see themselves in those positions and then start going after them. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our founding Dean of Operations, Carla, an Adams 14 alum. Hi everyone, my name is Carla Garcia, and as Mamie mentioned, I'm an Adams 14 alum. I attended school in multiple schools, but graduated from Lester Arnold High School. And I'm here today because the other day, I heard a story from a family describing things that my mom went through when I was in school. That was a long time ago. And it hasn't changed, and families have been promised change time and time again. And it's time that we do something about it. And so what I am here to, to help with is the vision that our community and our families have expressed already, which is we want our children to be exposed to opportunity which we do through university visits, we do through uh, partnerships with other companies and giving them an exceptional education. But for us to do that, we have to make sure that we aren't limiting ourselves to zip code or to ethnicity or race or even their socioeconomic background or immigration status. So what we are trying to do is what the community is asking us. And that's where we're standing right now. And that's what we want to do. With that, I want to pass it over to our wonderful Josette. Okay. Okay, guys. Good. Perfect. Hi. Um, I am a parent of four lovely children, one currently still in UPrep in fourth grade, their founding school, University Prep Arapaho Street. All of my children, I've sent them all here. Um, for a reason, for a vision, for a better education. Um, my four children, one that is special needs, my oldest, um, she's attended university prep. She has thrived in university prep and there for, not only for her, but for my other children, they have succeeded. They had a vision, they, they have obtained good quality education that they deserve. Um, I've sent them all there. 
their structure, the way they structure their school from the top to the bottom, from when you walk through the door to when you leave the door. I love everything about U Prep. The safety is there. You drive up, you drop your kid off, they pull your kid out, and they're so eager to, the teachers are so friendly and so outgoing and so uppity to excite your children about school. Your kids wanna go to school. They wanna be there, they wanna learn. Um, they have a great communication with their teachers and as far as the parent-teacher relationship, it's awesome. I have personal numbers, personal, you know, everything text, something happens, I get a text. I don't hear about it at the end of the day. I hear about it if it's happening. And that's something I really enjoy as a parent. I can, oh, something's going on with my kid. I can get to it. I didn't find out at the end of the day. I found out while it happened. Um, the relationship between the staff and the teachers and parents, it's just like a family. Um, I don't know how a better way to describe it. It's a family knitted Communication, everybody wants the same thing for your child, a good education, quality education, and what they deserve. I can say now the three older ones that have moved on to high school and element, uh, middle school, uh, they are thriving in those public schools. They have reached the highest standards you can possibly reach. They are the top in their schools as far as scoring goes. U prep sets that standard, that bar for our kids to reach, and our kids reach it. Um, I currently now, I don't know what to do with my kids in middle school because they're like, well, they could start some AP courses, they could start this. They don't know where to lead them, so it's thanks to U prep, thanks to their teachers, thanks to the dedication, thanks to the homework they send home every day for them it's made them to become a better person. So we wanna thank our panelists for their overview of their, um, and I'll have you guys hold on to that because you'll do a Q&A next, uh, for their presentation and giving an overview of the program. Again, if you wanna see the applicant's uh, application in its entirety, it is on our district website. At this time, we are going to move into our question and answer portion. Uh, so you all have the microphone up here. Uh, I will come around uh, for any questions that you all have, if you'll just write them on your note card and hold them up. If you have a follow-up question, if you'll please add it to an additional note card. If you need additional ones, we will bring them around to you, or you can grab them from a vacant chair that's next to you. While our applicant, I'm sorry, while our guests are getting their questions uh, prepared and ready to go, I do want to remind our audience uh, that we will be able to hear from both applicants again on Monday, November 15th at 6 o'clock, and then again on uh, Wednesday, November 17th at 10 a.m. We do have a community survey that is posted on our district website. The link is there. Uh, it closes Friday, December 10th at midnight. Uh, uh, regarding both of our applicants and the charter schools here for our Board of Education to consider as they take action on December 14th on both applications. All right, you guys ready? Yeah, and the video we didn't get to play, depending on how long questions go, maybe we'll get to play it, or it will be on the same website. Mario has informed us that it'll be available to you all there. Perfect, all right, question one. Okay. I appreciate that this application has been designed with the community input and desires. Can you say more about how you will continue to work alongside Commerce City families once authorized? And when you're done with that question, I have a, another one on the card. Thank you. Um, yeah, we spend a ton of time trying to get to know more community families. We recognize that the co-design process was only a limited pool of families in Commerce City, and we want to broaden that pool. So every day, myself, Carla, our family leaders are picking up the phone, calling other residents that have um, initiated response with us saying that they are interested in the potential for a new elementary campus. I also spend a significant amount of time at the Starbucks across the street. It has become my new favorite Starbucks. Um, Y'all have one of the best Walmarts out here. I know that is a small detail, but I really love going to the Walmart out here. Um, and I am always looking for new families that might want to engage in the process and share their voice, whether it's positive, negative, or what have you, um, because it is important. <laughs> it is important to hear from as many families and community members as possible to hear what we can do better in service of our families and kids. 
just one additional thought there, which is the school will be a, a family-oriented, community-based school, which means it is going to be a warm, inviting place for every parent to want to walk in the door, to hear your native language spoken when you walk in the door, to see your native language written on the walls of the halls. And Mamie, as the principal, co-founding a school alongside of parents means that those relationships are going to be the starting point to the school. And there will be school accountability committees, family achievement councils. But the way parents are going to show up because they had voice in creating the school is going to transform how that school listens to parents forever. Not at the start, but a forever. And we're really proud of that fact because that's how schools should start. Uh, with that relationship so strong and with the inviting of let me listen to you and let me learn from you and then let me change and adapt based on what you're telling me because you're the expert on your kid. We think the premise of the trust in the relationship is what establishes all of that to be possible for the future of the school. Thank you. And the next question on that same card is, what uh, do specific supports for emergent bilingual students look like? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, really proud of this component of our school design. These parents were so adamant. Us were board members, uh, like Janet Estrada here in, in uh, Adams 14, that bilingualism is an asset, right? Being fluent in two languages is powerful. It's forceful. You can do a lot with that. And so there's a number of layers there. Uh, one, we believe there needs to be Spanish as a core element of the curricular program for native and non-native speakers. Because if I walk in already as a native language speaker of Spanish, my needs are very different than I've never been exposed to the language. So multiple Spanish teachers who are focused on delivering curriculum that either strengthens your existing Spanish language skills or exposes you to that language, all in alignment with this idea of a seal by literacy. Because just because I'm conversational in Spanish does not mean I can pass an AP Spanish exam in high school. So we've got to get kids established on that. Two, we have what's called integrated and dedicated ELD, which is deeply aligned to the language learner plan that the district approved in October of 2020 and was approved by the Office of Civil Rights. And so what that means is in core instruction throughout the day, if I'm an emerging bilingual student, I'm getting integrated ELD supports, English language development, in every content area. So that means I'm getting more opportunities to speak to my partner in class. That means I have more visual supports. That means I can lean on my native and language. That it's great if I have some words in, in my own Spanish language that are going to help me understand the content. That means that the class has content language standards. What are the English standards that are actually going to be learned in this math class today? So that's integrated ELD. It's all the supports kids get in regular instruction, so they don't have to get pulled out. But what they're getting in that class gives them access to the content. Then there's dedicated ELD, which is 45 minute block every day, five days a week, in which kids are learning the foundations of the English language in four standards, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Those blocks are taught by folks who are certified. So, uh, and by certified, I mean culturally and linguistically diverse endorsements, uh, for CLDE endorsements, sorry. Uh, it's really important to us that they have the skill set, the teachers who are running those programs, and that's K through fifth grade. We also run that like a flood block, which means every ELD teacher is available at the same time, so you can really differentiate right, what Juan is getting or Kevin or anyone else, make sure that they're getting what they need at their level. Uh, and so, that, so it's the combination of that core Spanish instruction, integrated ELD, dedicated ELD time with a warm, inviting school culture that says your language is welcomed here. It's actually an asset in this building that we think dramatically changes the experience for emerging bilingual students. Thank you. Other questions? If you prep joins the district, what middle school should the kids go to? Can you repeat the question? Absolutely. If U Prep joins the district, what middle school should the kids go to? Uh, number one, parents should be going to schools that are in line with their kids' needs. And that's not for us to dictate to a parent, right? What our job is to expose you to every option that would exist, tour those schools, see those teachers in action, look at the results of those schools, understand how the alumni who leave those schools are doing, and then make a choice. So we don't see our job as to tell you what to do or where to send your child. We see our job as being educators. Educate you on those choices. Make sure you have the full scope. Also, since the school is proposed as a slow growth start, which we start with kindergarten or pre-K and kindergarten and then grow grade level at a time, it is actually our hope that many of the school options in the community will potentially have been transformed at that point. 
right? All SUPs being transformed. DuPont's now a dual language elementary school. There's lots of work on career and technical education programs in the district. So there are new opportunities coming online, we think, over the next five years. So what the ecosystem looks like in middle school in, in Adams 14, five years from today, or six years out, could look very different. So I think it'll be our job to really explore those options and make sure families make informed choices that meet their needs, that ideally exist within Adams 14, and a family does not have to choose to exit the district to get that choice. That's ideal status of what we want to see happen. Thank you. Other questions? Sheila, does it work to play the video so folks can get some more exposure while we have minutes? If that's how you'd like to use the Q&A portion of that, I mean, absolutely. I'd love to have a donut party, but I, I would imagine that that's not an option. So, <laughs> so I'm a huge fan of donuts. I don't know what to tell you. Absolutely. So what I will say is we'll get the video queued up. Is that if there's questions that um, arise, if you will put your cards up and I can come by and collect them. I do want to also share that um, if we don't have enough time to be able to answer all questions, they will be available due, due to a, a FAQ or a Frequently Asked Questions page on our district website. I learned very quickly. What do I need to do for them to connect the dots? Their teachers care. You know, they make the effort. It's not just school, 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 and there's no personal time. Each teacher makes a connection with each child. Any kid that enters my room, you're going to learn, and you're going to get that choice. Because you're a person. You are a future something. Know that there are people in this building that believe in your scholar and they are going to want the best for your scholar. Él está ahora yendo a a Kent Denver School. Es una escuela privada. Me dijo para el siguiente año va a ir también a Kent Denver. Estamos muy muy orgullosos de de nuestros dos hijos. Think about all the doors that you want open for your child and the possibilities to be endless for them. Why not you prep? Honestly, is my bigger question. Nunca Nunca paran de ayudar, pues si necesitas ayuda, este, ahí están por ti. These kids are going to be world shakers. You can feel it when you come into the room. We want you to be able to have choice and choose for yourself of what your life is going to be like. Thank you. Any questions at this time for our applicant? Two questions on the card. What is UPREP doing to help students catch up academically from COVID? And then once you're done with that, I'll ask the follow-up question. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, we recognize very early in the pandemic how much kids were struggling uh, with learning loss, with social emotional development. Um, 
with just really developing what they need to thrive uh, in their elementary education. And so last March, our board of trustees, our board of directors approved a two-year catch-up plan that we're incredibly proud of um, to address all of these gaps. It is a significant investment of time and resources. And what it looks like, for example, is we have grouped our schools into kind of three small schools, K-1, 2, 3, and then 4th and 5th, knowing that 4th and 5th graders have a shorter runway to be ready for middle school. And so in 4th and 5th grade, each of those grade levels has an additional teacher so they can get more targeted feedback and more support. The second and third grade band has another additional teacher. Again, so kids can get more support. The way we use minutes in the day, we shifted that to make sure kids who were not reading at grade level in particular, because reading unlocks everything, we get more reading intervention and reading supports. We have 73 kids right now in 100% free after school tutoring in small groups. One of our tutor leaders is here, Kevin, wave to the, fin, the fine folks. Uh, and Kevin will sit with a child till 5 or 5.30 a night, giving them everything they need to grow their brain and address the unfinished learning they have. And those kids will continue tutoring throughout the school year, and we've actually budgeted for them to continue it next school year. So when their day is over, they're still getting more attention, more support. We increased our relationship with the Mental Health Center of Denver, knowing that kids were going to need more therapy because of what they've been exposed to and what they've experienced in this pandemic. And it has been tragic. And so their access to therapists, including our family's access to therapists, we've increased that as well. And so it is an overall robust group of services to make sure kids are really getting what they need in an urgent time frame, right? Because the catch-up window is going to close. And as kids start to feel like they're behind and can't understand the material in class, they start to pull back from school. And so we can tighten that window to make sure I feel prepared for the day. I know my stuff. I can engage in this classroom. It makes a huge difference for motivation. And motivation is what leads to the dinner table conversation and the endless opportunities that Mamie spoke about. So we're very proud of our catch-up plan, our catch-up efforts. And in fact, uh, the Colorado Department of Education is doing a two-year case study on university prep. It's the only school doing this across the entire state of Colorado to see how infusing additional resources and funds in very strategic ways can rapidly address or accelerate student learning so that unfinished learning closes quickly and no kid then misses out. And so we're really excited about that work with the State Department of Education and more importantly excited about what's happening in our schools every day to make sure that Josette's fourth grader, Gio, who goes to tutoring, uh, <laughs> he's a character, great hair, he's got great hair, uh, that Gio and all of his classmates are getting exactly what they need and deserve versus just hoping things get fixed because it's not going to work that way. And the follow-up question to that is, how much money are you allocating towards these efforts? Al, you're in the room, but I think now it's looking at between $1.2 and $1.7 million. Yeah, so let's average that around $1.4. About $1.4 million over a two-year window, 100% to the additional educators, the after-school programming, the tutoring, the additional mental health services and resources, additional curriculum that we've purchased, and then making sure families continue to have hotspots at home, one-on-one -on -one technology, all of those costs over two years so that there is zero burden and zero barrier. There can be no burden on the family and no barrier to the family. Okay, so the other part of the catch-up for us, which I didn't name, sorry, is we've also dramatically increased the family partnership component. Because it's not just on us to catch a kid up, it's on us to make sure a child gets caught up. And so we did home visits with every one of our fourth and fifth grade families over the summer, knowing that they would have greater urgency to get back on track. Instead of doing parent-teacher conferences twice a year, they're now four times a year, because everybody's got to be in the know, right? If Juan has to know where are his boys. Josette's got to know where is Gio. And then what are we doing at school and what can you do at home? And we've got to track and monitor that with more diligence, because the consequences are really scary if we don't close those gaps. And we need parents saying, my kid's not growing fast enough, and then we got to do something about it. And we also have to be celebrating how much growth kids are making, how fast they're making it. So that family partnership piece uh, enhanced our summer home visits, which is part of every school year. We do that in the summer, but it added quite a lot to our teacher's plate, but it was the right thing to do, so we did it. Because we're a place that does the right thing when it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Other questions? I 
I got it. Yeah. Okay, question is, how can you see that kids with disabilities have the same opportunity as regular kids without disabilities? Well, one, you don't, we don't call them kids with disabilities. We start everything with the idea that special education is a label that was used in the 70s that we think is idiotic. So we use the word scholar advancement. Because one, you're still a scholar even if you have special needs. And at any moment in time, any child could need advancing because of a disability or something else. And so our kids who get scholar advancement supports aren't any different. They just have a different need in a moment in time to achieve the same outcome. And so how do we do that? One, we have a stronger ratio of scholar advancement or special education teachers to kids. So instead of a caseload of let's say 20 to one, in our current schools it looks more like 12 or 13 to one. Because that group of kids needs more individualized attention. Again, the bar of where you're gonna go is the same. How you get there could look different, and that's okay. Two, we do as much push-in support as we can versus pull-out. So pull-out is I'm in a math class and we go, okay, Mariah, you've gotta leave this room to go get this other thing. No, no, no. The support's gonna to come to you in the room so you don't feel left out or put aside. Another thing we do, the nicest classroom in our buildings is the room that kids get additional supports. <laughs> it's not the closet down the hall, it is literally the nicest physical space in the classroom. So going there doesn't feel different, it feels like a great place to go. And so it is all of those pieces combined with the parent relationship. So we build an individualized education plan with a child. We do it with the teachers, the special educators, sorry, the general education teachers special education teachers, which we call scholar advancement. The specialists, so that could be psychologists or occupational therapists or speech language folks, and the parents. And we build the plan together. And that's again a group that gets more checkpoints because they deserve more touch points because their needs are higher. And when you do all those things and tell a kid and remind them, this is your best self, right? There's the mirror, you can be this great. They become that great. They do not see the disability as limiting. Then you sprinkle in the core value of perseverance. For some kids who have dyslexia, it will take more. It will be harder to get where you're going. That's not good or bad, it's just truth. And we help you digest that truth and see your cadence of growth over time and know that I take one step and then another one and another one and I will get to the top of the staircase. It might take me a little longer, the journey might be more arduous, we're gonna give you more support, more love, and you're damn well gonna get there. And, and so that's really how we think about special education which I think is different than in many school environments. About a minute and 10 seconds left. Any additional questions for our guests? Okay. Question is, what is your vision for the next 10 years for U Prep in Commerce City? <laughs> you got too excited. 48 seconds. No, I get more time. You took it. <laughs> the vision starts with families. What do families and what does the community want to see for kids? If we start there and we continue to call our shot, then the vision continues to expand. So for me personally, as the founding leader, it is about continuing to listen, continuing to leverage people that want to share their voice and saying, what are we going to do next? Okay, we made it here, now where can we go next? And constantly trying to beat ourselves. I grew up as a competitive cheerleader, so I'm very hard and competitive against myself. And once I see what we can do, I'm like, okay, that's great. Now what's next? Um, and vision is ever changing, right? The, the job market is going to change, it's going to increase, it is going to get more dynamic, and we have to be responsive to that. Just saying that this is what we said today and this is what we're going to do for kids is not going to be enough two years from now, five years from now. And so it really is going to take all of us to make sure that we continue to call our shot in a way that's meaningful for our kids and really continues to open the doors for them. Thank you. And that concludes our Q&A portion of today's session. I wanna thank our guests for being here. I also wanna give a special thanks to all of you for joining us today. Uh, if you have additional questions on your cards, feel free to write them down and we'll make sure to pass them on to you, Prep, so that way you can respond to them and it'll be part of our Q&A portion of, or I'm sorry, our FAQ section of our district webpage. Uh, we will also have a second presentation on Monday, November 15th at 6 o'clock, and again Wednesday the 17th at 10 a.m. with both applicants. Thank you again for joining us today and giving up part of your Saturday.